Hello and welcome back to MLab 1231 Parasitology and Mycology. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster and this is going to be the second of our three-part presentation on the class Cestoda, the tapeworms. The first organism that we're going to cover is Hymenolopus nana. This is known as the dwarf tapeworm and causes Hymenolopus infection. It is found worldwide in tropical and subtropical areas and it is the most common, it is most commonly seen in children and people living in close quarters. It is the most prevalent human tapeworm in the United States. And the adult worm is only two to four centimeters in length, hence the name dwarf tapeworm. And it has a scolex of four sucking discs and a short rostellum with hooks. The proglottids are wider than they are long and disintegrate quickly in the intestine, therefore rarely being seen in fecal specimens. The eggs are 40 to 50 microns in diameter, with polar filaments protruding from the terminal ends of the hexacanth embryo. The bottom image here is the hexacanth embryo in the shell of Hymenolopus nana. The ends here, these are the terminal ends, which have the polar filaments extruding. The middle image here is an adult worm, and the right image is the scolex of Hymenolopus nana. Again, the adults are fairly delicate. They disintegrate in the intestine, and so the eggs are the most common stage seen in fecal specimens. Hymenolpus nana, the life cycle begins with the arthropod intermediate host, which is the beetle or the flea, becoming infected by ingesting eggs. Those eggs, once in the arthropod intermediate host, developed into cystic cercoids, which are capable of infecting the definitive host, the human or the rodent. The humans or the rodents become infected from ingesting fecally contaminated food, water, or hands with, saturated with eggs. Once infected, the onchospheres are released from the eggs, which then penetrate the intestinal velus. They then develop into cystocercoid larvae, which rupture from the velus and migrate to the intestinal lumen. Once there, they attach their scolices in the intestinal mucosa and develop into adults in the ileal portion of the small intestine. There, they produce gravid proglottids, which continues the life cycle. Alternatively, the host is infected by ingesting cystocercoid infected insects, which we discussed in the first part of this life cycle. The cystocercoid larvae travel, if infected this way, directly to the intestinal velus for attachment and production, and production of gravid proglottids. The pathology of Hymenolopus nana can be asymptomatic with light infection, while heavy infection can result in intestinal enteritis, abdominal pain, diarrhea, headache, dizziness, and anorexia. Humans and rodents are the definitive hosts, while the common house mouse is the most commonly found source of Hymenolopus nana. Cystosorcoid larvae develop into infected insects and is infective to humans and rodents if ingested. The most common source of human infection is feces from infected mice and rats. Hymenolopus diminuta is our next organism. It is known as the rat tapeworm, and it is distributed worldwide. Hymenolopus diminuta is uh, commonly seen in rats and mice, which is why it has the name rat tapeworm. While humans become infected typically accidentally by ingesting infected rat or grain beetles, which serve as the intermediate host. The adult is slightly larger than Hymenolopus nana at 20 to 60 centimeters long. 
It has a Skolex with no hooks, unlike Nana. It is structurally, structurally similar, but slightly larger. The eggs, again, are also slightly larger at 60 to 80 microns in diameter, and they do not possess polar filaments at the terminal ends of the hexacanth embryo, seen here and here. So another one of the, of the distinguishing factors between Hymenolopus diminuta and Hymenolopus nana is that they do not have polar filaments, whereas Hymenolopus nana does. The life cycle of Hymenolopus diminuta begins with the arthropod intermediate host ingesting eggs and that are passed in the feces of the infected definitive host, the humans or rodents. Uh, the arthropod intermediate hosts ingest those eggs where they mature into oncospheres, which penetrate the intestinal wall of the host um, using the hooklets and the hexacanth embryo as a means of attachment. Those oncospheres then develop into cystocercoid larvae. The definitive host, uh, the humans or rodents, vertebral animals like mice and rats, become infected. Uh, by ingesting of the arthropod carrying cystocercoid larvae. Those tissues of the arthropod once ingested then release cystocercoid larvae in the stomach and the small intestine of the definitive host of vertebral animals. The larvae then attach themselves to the small intestine using four suckers on the scolex and maturation of that larvae takes place around 20 days. Gravid proglottids, once produced, break off, releasing eggs in the host species, continuing the cycle. Infection with Hymenolopus diminuta can be asymptomatic, again with light infection, or heavier infection can cause abdominal pain, itching, irritability, eosinophilia, Loeffler syndrome, and worms are often lost spontaneously. The frequent definitive host of Diminuta is the rat. While humans often become infected from eating pre-cooked cereals, contaminated with infected grain beetles. Our next organism is Diphyllidium caninum, also known as the double pore dog tapeworm. It is distributed worldwide, and dogs and cats serve as the definitive host. Humans become infected rarely and it is often associated with close contact with infected pets. The adult measures up to 70 centimeters in length and averages 3 centimeters in width. The rostellum is armed and includes four sucking discs. The gravid proglottids are about the size of a grain of rice and the proglottids have two genital pores, which gives it the name double pored. The egg are contained in packets, and each of those packets contains approximately 12 eggs. Seen in the image in the bottom left here is the packet of eggs, and on the right are the double pored proglottids. The life cycle of Diphyllidium caninum begins with the gravid intact proglottids being passed in the feces of the infected human or vertebral animal, dog or cat. Uh, the intermediate host, which is the flea, becomes infected by ingesting the infected egg. Oncospheres release from the eggs inside the flea's intestine, where they penetrate the intestinal wall of the flea. And there, the oncospheres develop into cystocercoid larvae. The cystocercoid larvae then develop into an adult worm, where that adult worm harbors the infective cystocercoid larvae. The definitive host the vertebral animals such as the dog, cat, fox, mouse, or sometimes humans 
and become infected from ingesting the cystosorcoid contaminated flea. The cystosorcoid larvae then develop into an adult worm in the small intestine of the definitive vertebral host. And that development usually takes about one month. Diphlidium caninum infection in dogs and cats may be asymptomatic while scooting or dragging of the anus along the ground can often be seen, which is a sign of diphlidium caninum infection. Those animals, if infected, can also suffer from weight loss, another classic sign of diphlidium caninum infection. Humans, if infected, can suffer abdominal pain, diarrhea, and rectal itching, and pain from emerging proglottids. Uh, of note is that human infections are often found in children playing closely with animals that are infected, although infection in humans is very rare. That is going to be the conclusion of the second of our three-part presentation on Cestoda. We will pick this back up with our next batch of organisms in part three.